Hi Anthony, thanks for the footage. I uh, look forward to helping you out with your swing over the coming months and um, rather envious of the fact that you're practicing in a t-shirt in, uh, in November when I'm over here freezing. Uh, but anyway, I'll put that to one side and just take a little look at your swing. Uh, doing a pretty good job. I mean, for someone who's pick stack and tilt up recently and you know presumably reading between the lines just taught yourself via what's available out there on the internet you've done a really good job uh, just put some key sort of lines and points on here to give you a quick overview of where you are at the moment uh, relating to the key aspects of the swing uh, stack and tilt we want to swing around a stable axis so we've got the yellow dot in the center of the shoulder turn face on uh, we want to maintain a steady head position, both from down the line and face on. So put the box around the head. And we want to maintain a consistent inclination to the ground. So put the blue line on there to illustrate the forward bend that's set up. And see whether we can maintain that throughout the swing. And like I say, you've done a really good job of getting some basic movements in there. As you swing, your inclination to the ground. So the blue line on the left is maintained pretty much throughout the swing the left shoulder when viewed from face on is working down nicely down and around at a steady rate so that's the extension the side bend to the left the left tilt all going in there Centre of the shoulder turn is very stable. And if you're turning on a tilted angle, maintaining your inclination to the ground around a stable axis, then your head is going to stay inside that box all the way to the top. And then for the majority of the downswing. So yes, there's a little bit of tidying up to do, but the actual core movements that you're looking to achieve uh, are starting to bed in there really nicely. Uh, for someone, like I say, who's just sort of you know, taught themselves to do it over the past few weeks or months. You've done a really good job, so well done in that respect. So the first thing I want to do is spend time discussing what you do from down the line in transition. And the bulk of this lesson really is going to be about the way you change direction and what we want to have happen with the shaft as we change direction. So I'm just going to take you up to the top. Okay, pretty tiny position there. We can see that Mike's shaft is what we would say looking a little bit more laid off. Um, it's not actually laid off because the swing is short of parallel. The shaft will look laid off. But if that was to, if the arms were to continue to swing further back, the play was to turn more, the club would travel further on the arc and start to line up with the hands. So even though it looks across the line, uh, sorry, even though it looks laid off, it actually isn't. With yourself, the shaft does look a little bit across the line and if it was to go further with a longer club, the shaft would not go more across the line. And that could result in pushes to the right, heel strikes, quick hooks, etc. So we'd want to tidy up the position the shaft's in at the top of the backswing. And what we'd also want to try and do is tidy up the condition of the shaft when the left arm is near as damn it parallel to the ground. I can't quite get yours parallel uh, because of the frames per second on the camera, but you get the idea if I pause mic at the same spot, we can start to see some differences. So both players have got the arms angled in. One player's shaft is coming just below the right shoulder. The other player's shaft is midway through the right bicep, which is more desirable, more on plane with yourself. That shaft is coming down a little bit too steep and can 
if left unattended, so make, without making any compensations, start to tumble out in front of you too much. So we want to tidy up the position at the top and the position of the shaft midway down to really improve your consistency and your quality strike. So we go back to the top of the backswing with both players. And we look at the right elbow. Your right elbow is pointing out slightly more, whereas Mike's is pointing more straight down. So what we would want to try and do with yourself here, Anthony, is we want to feel like the right elbow is more turned in towards the golf ball at the top. As the right elbow points down slightly more, the club head will start to move more in line at the top. So as this elbow moves in, this sweet spot will move out and the shaft will realign itself. Once we're in the position that we see Mike in at the top, it's much easier to get the shaft to shallow on the way down. So it's the condition of the right elbow at the top of the backswing. more this right elbow, I'm just going to get rid of all those lines, the more this right elbow comes out, the more this shaft goes across the line and your reaction then is to set the club a little bit too steep. Now initially the best drill to, to get a feel for this uh, would be to just make some swings uh, with just your right hand. So take your normal setup, take your, take your left hand off the golf club and just make some swings. It'll feel very alien at first, uh, may feel a little bit out of control. Uh, you, don't need to make a back, uh, you don't need to make a down swing, just a back swing. And just get a feel for the difference um, in regards to how the club face feels or how the club head feels during the swing. Does it feel like it's lighter, heavier? Does it feel like it rotates more? You will feel a marked difference in the way the elbow works. Uh, you'll feel like the elbow is, as you get to the top of the backswing, turning in or turning towards the golf ball rather than pointing out behind you. Uh, and you'll just do this as a matter of course. Uh, whenever you take a hand off the golf club, you now have to swing in a slightly more efficient manner to control the weight of that club. Uh, would be a good exercise would be to film yourself making some swings with just the right hand. Uh, once you've done that and you get an overall feel, then the next exercise would be to place a glove beneath the right arm at setup. I'm just going to take you back down here. And as you set up to the golf ball, what I would want you to do is put the glove on the underside of the right arm. Just get rid of that arrow for you. So place the glove under the right arm, but on the underside and squeeze the living daylights out of it. You need to be swinging this, squeezing that glove at maybe sort of nine out of 10, uh, 10 being as tight as you can. Uh, really put a squeeze on that glove under the arm and then make some back swings. And what that's going to encourage you to do is going to encourage you to load the right arm in a slightly different manner. 
So as we go back, we see here at this point, the right elbow starts to work behind you a little bit too much. And it's just going to encourage a little bit more inward movement of the hands early in the swing. Uh, like I say, a slightly different loading of the right arm. You don't need to necessarily be able to... Um, to articulate that to anybody, uh, it's, it's purely a feel, and it's certainly going to relocate the golf club and the right elbow at the top of the backswing. So we need to keep that squeeze on all the way to the top, and then as we transition, keep that squeeze on as well. It's something that you have to feel uh, and then observe. It's unfortunate. I mean, if we could. If you, you know, if you, if you live near me and you could come down for a one-to-one -one session and we could get you on the mat, we could show you this very easily um, and you would get it very quickly. I appreciate that, you know, this is being done from, from quite a distance away, uh, the other side of the world, so this is something that, you know, you may need to email me about and ask me a question about. That's fine. Get the glove, put it under the base, of the, under the underside of the right arm and I want you to keep the squeeze on that glove all the way to the top and then as you transition so really squeeze it during the early part of the downswing as we apply more pressure to the underside of the arm in transition the shaft will start to fall back in place um, one of the reason for your inconsistencies at the moment is because you're setting the shaft very steep but you're trying to satisfy the image you have in your mind of a little push draw. So in order for us to push draw the golf ball, we want a position midway down where the arms are in, the elbow is tucked under a little bit more rather than potentially popping out. And again, these are subtle feels. These are not things that you can necessarily see on the camera. However, when the right elbow is squeezed for longer, we start to see that instead of the right or the back of the left hand pointing forward, it points up more. Which means as we then go further into the swing, the shaft is able to shallow and come more from the inside allowing the player to hit out for longer through the hit so the change at setup or the piece that we had at setup which is the squeezing of the glove on the underside of the right arm don't put it right under the arm put it on the underside of the arm when you go out and play golf uh, even if you're playing in a tournament you can squeeze the underside of the shirt sleeve between the arm and the chest and that's you know perfectly within the rules of golf uh, but when you practice get a glove underneath that arm on the inside really squeeze it but I can't stress to you enough keep that squeeze on all the way through the downswing as well certainly in the early part of the downswing if the glove comes out in the follow through I'm not really bothered about that but the early part of the downswing you need to keep that squeeze on for longer in regards to the two way miss so that's the mechanics of it in regards to the two way miss what I see here is a player who has a club face that is I'm just going to put a plain line up here for you Put both plane lines on one through the hands, one through the elbow. In the early part of the swing, the club face is opening up to the arc a little bit too much. Now, this is something that we can look at in subsequent sessions if needs be. Uh, it's also something that may change when you apply the piece that I've just discussed with you um, with the glove under the right arm, which is referred to as pressure point five. If you go on the online forums or if you follow the videos that I put up on YouTube. So that may change, uh, but if it doesn't, we can tidy this up pretty quickly. So at the moment, we've got a club face that opens up very quickly to the arc on the way back. But closes down quickly to the arc on the way through. So we've got a club face that is 
opening up and then closing down very quickly. Um, so almost like, you know, it's set up we're like this. Target, obviously, we're looking from above. Target lines here. Club face relatively square to it. And then what's happening is, on the way back, we open the club face up. And then on the way down, we're closing the club face down very quickly. So we've got this sort of windscreen wiper effect. And the problem with that is that this club face is never really going to return to the same place consistently because it's being manipulated too much. It's being rolled open on the way back. And whenever we roll it open on the way back, we've got to roll it square on the way through. If we don't roll it square enough, we're going to lose it out to the right. If we roll it a little bit too square to close, we're going to hook it left. So we've got this two-way miss scenario going on. So what we need to do is manipulate the club less. There will be some rotation of the club face. Um, it would be incorrect to, to, you know, to say otherwise. But we want to keep it to a minimum. At the moment, we've got a club face that is rolling open and shut too excessively. Um, possibly because of things you've been told in the past through golf coaching. And also this idea that we have to release the golf club through the hip. What I would say to you is work the mechanics of the swing in as discussed. If you look at Mike there, he's got the side of the arm squeezed tight to the chest. There's absolutely no lifting. You couldn't get a credit card under that arm there at that point. And then as he comes down, add some squeeze to it. Still tight to the chest. Still tight to the chest. You can see there's a little bit of a release at that point. But still that arm tight against the torso. So keep the arm squeezed tight against the torso. And reduce the rotation of the club face. So what I would say is, you know, when you're out there playing and when you're out there hitting shots, um, it's more of a mindset thing. Remove the term release from your golfing vocabulary. There is no need to release the golf club. Um, the the rotation of the club face throughout the swing, particularly through the hip, is the effect of the extension, the uncocking of the wrists, etc. It's not a conscious move. Good players do not consciously rotate the club face open and shut throughout the hip. It's too chaotic a movement and it's far too difficult to time under pressure. So try and remove the need or remove the, um, the term release from your vocabulary. So keep the squeeze under the arm. That's going to tidy up the top of the backswing position, make it look a little bit more like you see with Mike, rather than across the line. As we add the squeeze to the underside of the right arm, the elbow will come in a little bit, and the shaft will lay off a little bit. From there, you'll find it much easier to shallow the shaft out in transition, providing you keep that squeeze on. Uh, film yourself doing the drill. Film yourself swinging with just the right hand. Film yourself in particular when you're swinging with the glove under the right arm, really squeezing it. Um, and, you know, don't be frightened. Film yourself without a ball sometimes, because sometimes putting a ball in front of a player can just distract them a little bit from what they're doing. Uh, so don't be hesitant in, in filming your swing in that manner when you're doing the drills. The more you film it, the more you look at it whilst doing the drills, the better understanding you have of your mechanics, the, the movements of the golf swing and how they apply to you and your particular shot pattern. And that can only be good for your learning. So the more you can film it, the better. Uh, hopefully we can get some more footage over the next couple of weeks and we can keep our eye on how things are progressing, uh, add more detail if needs be. Uh, what I'll also do is in subsequent sessions I'll start to send you a few emails across afterwards with a demonstration of the piece that I've talked about because that can be handy sometimes as well. Uh, but in this particular instance just keep the squeeze on the underside of that right arm, shallow the shaft out. From face on you're doing a very good job, the weight's plenty enough forward. Um, I'd like to maybe tidy up what the head does post impact. Uh, but then again that may tidy itself up when you work these changes in. So good luck with it. If you've got any questions, like I say, feel free to send me an email. 
um, or you know if you want to chat on Skype at some point we can do that as well uh, but for now just keep adding the pieces uh, leave me some feedback and obviously keep in touch in regards to the changes prescribed good luck with it well done